Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about my top seven most complimented niche fragrances. So these seven, well, five plus two honorable mentions are all fragrances that are all niche. So they're all on the kind of higher end in terms of the price, but that does come at the cost of better compliments, better reactions, better performance, and just better scent profiles in general in terms of quality and stuff like that, usually. So we are gonna kick things off with the number seven spot. Just before we do, remember guys, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to drop a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe as well. We're growing a really nice community that's all centered around fragrances. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, then feel free to subscribe. So we are gonna kick things off in the on mention spot slash number seven spot. I, I wasn't too sure on if I was gonna actually include this in the list because it's a fairly new one and it's one that I've had a few compliments with, but not as many as the other ones on the list. So I can't really include it. So I'm gonna put it, I am gonna put an honorable mention spot. Uh, and that one is this one here from the House of Zerjoff and it's Renaissance. So Renaissance is such a citrusy fragrance. I'm just gonna quickly smell it. Oh man, it's so lemony, it's so minty, it feels so green. And the performance on this thing lasts all day. So for me in the summer, this was great. It's kind of more sort of upscale, it's quite posh. It's quite refined in that sense. But because of all the citrus in here, it does also make it casual. So it's, re it's a really weird one. Like you could wear this upscale to like an event or something like that. Or if you wanted to just treat it like I do and just spray it on casually, uh, you can get away with it because of the really nice hit of citrus and mint you get in this. It's really refreshing. It was perfect for the summertime. I get great reactions with this. Usually, like I said, I'd wear this casually. So if I was ever wearing like a shirt or if ever I was like going out uh, just up to the shops or something, something like that, uh, I would sometimes get nice compliments from this one. So coming in at the uh, number seven slash honorable mention spot, we have got Zerjoff Renaissance. Really nice green citrus smell. Okay, and coming in at the other honorable mention spot, the number six spot basically, this is the complete opposite of Renaissance. This is a quite ambery smell. So this one is uh, really upsetting me that I've had to put this one in the honorable mention spot because to me, this is my second favorite Amouage fragrance of all time. It might give it away. And it's this one here, Reflection 45. And probably the coolest bottle design I own. Just so cool. Just look at that, man. Uh, There's a reason why it's called Reflection Man. <laughs> uh, probably because of the bottle. It is probably one of my favorite smells of all time. If I could wear and only smell like one thing, I would want it to be this. And that's actually quite a good thing and, and quite actually related to this fragrance because uh, the perfume concentration here, 45, that's why it's called Reflection 45. It doesn't, it's quite a hard bottle to record actually. Uh, but because it's called Reflection 45, perfume concentration is 45%. And that is a very high amount. It's a extract de parfum. So it's very, very strong in terms of the uh, concentration they use which comes at a cost. It means that it doesn't project too much. So weirdly with this one, uh, I, weirdly I usually wear this whenever I go out to like the, the big kind of city that I go to uh, for like a night out and I go to the bars and stuff like that. And I'll go with some of my friends and you know, when you're in your bar, you have to kind of lean in close. Uh, I usually wear this one because it does sit quite close to the skin but I do know that whenever I spray this, it's gonna last me the whole night and sometimes into the next morning as well because of how good the longevity is of this one. Only thing though is it just doesn't project. Uh, the scent profile of this one uh, is like the original Reflection Man, if you've ever tried that. Um, if you have got that one, you probably don't need to get this bottle, I'll be honest. Uh, again, this one's a little bit more kind of light and airy and this one, to my nose, and other people around me actually does project a bit better than Reflection 45. But this one's just a bit darker. Um, if you know the Reflection Man DNA, uh, it's kind of like a white floral, but this one has like an extra bit of spiciness in it. It's got a bit more vanilla, so it sweetens it up a little bit. It's got a little bit of, I think it's ginger note in here, or I definitely get uh, some kind of gingery smell, probably from the benzoin. Oh, man, it just smells like 
or not fresh laundry sheets on this one, but it does give me that sort of vibe. Something the king would wear, it just smells like royalty. Coming at the number six spot, you've got Reflection 45. Definitely recommend uh, actually sampling this one before you get a full bowl. Okay, so coming in at the number five spot, this is my fifth most complimented niche fragrance. And this one I wore a lot in the winter and the fall and winter time. Uh, I haven't really reached for it too much in the spring and summer, I'll be honest. But because of how good it is, it is quite versatile too. Uh, there's a really nice note of lemon and lavender in here, which can sometimes, if it's like a cold summer's day, you can get away with wearing it. I probably wouldn't wear it in the really, really high heat because it could get quite cloying uh, because at number five spot, Zerjoff Naxos, this has the note of honey and tobacco in it as well. So perfect for winter time. Might stay away from it more in the spring and summer, which is why I think it's a little bit lower down the list. But the performance on this thing is just incredible. 10 to 12 hours. Uh, I've had people say that I smell a bit like Old Spice towards like the six to eight hour mark, but I really don't mind that. Uh, <laughs> it's still recognition at the end of the day. And uh, there's probably a big reason why people call me out on this one and say I smell nice because the honey note in here is just to die for. It's so sweet. If you've ever smelled Pure Havan by Thierry Mugley, this is like a kind of more smoother version of it. This is a more refined, uh, smoother approach to that one. And I know a fragrance is good whenever my girlfriend likes it. And every time I wear this, she always gives me a compliment saying I smell really nice. And she always asks, well, what are you wearing today? And whenever I tell her it's this one, she says, oh, the honey one. I'm like, yeah, that one. <laughs> so coming at the number five spot, guys, super good fall and winter niche fragrance. Uh, but depending on the batch, we've done, we've had a video about this. You could potentially get away with wearing this in the spring and summer, depending on where you live. In the UK, it can get quite cold on some days in the summer, and you can just about get away with wearing this. So coming at the number five spot, Zerjoff Naxos. Okay, coming in at the number four spot, I'm starting to see a trend now for these remaining fragrances we've got on the list. They all seem to be more kind of geared towards spring and summer. And um, the one that we are talking about is this one here. Another Amouage, this is Beach Hut Man. So Beach Hut Man is a really green, almost ivy smell and mint. So Renaissance, you've got a green, citrusy uh, mint, whereas Beach Up Man is almost the complete opposite in terms of the mint. It's a very kind of sticky, ivy smell. Very, Whenever you smell it, it's green in a sticky green, whereas this is like a kind of really light, limey green, if that makes any sense. Uh, let me know in the comments below, because uh, to me, <laughs> I could just be chatting a bunch of rubbish, but Beach Up Man is something you really need to smell uh, and get a sample of before you actually decide to go out and buy a full bottle. Because most people, when they hear the term Beach Hut Man, they think of like sandy, uh, sandy ivy driftwood uh, on like a really nice tropical sandy beach. But it couldn't be further from the actual fragrance itself. This is more uh, if you go to like a hut in the jungle. That's what you would get with Beach Hut Man. And I wore this when I went out to Tenerife for a week. And I brought it in like a little sample bottle. I think I still have the sample bottle. Yeah, I do. Beach Up Man. And I only brought two mil of this because of how strong this thing is. Um, you actually don't need to spray too much. And I went out with a bunch of my friends and they told me, bro, you need to relax with the sprays. You're, what you're wearing is nuclear. Uh, that is the exact words that they used. And funnily enough, I only wore three sprays from the sample bottle. Uh, for them to say that I smell nuclear. So <laughs> performance on this thing is definitely not an issue. Uh, if you're a fan of green fragrances uh, and just something a bit different, then I would definitely recommend you pick up Beach Hut Man because like I said, when I was out in Tenerife, um, I would be walking down the street and I had a few people that just be like, is, is that one of you boys? You, one of you smell really nice. And um, yeah, because uh, I know as the, uh, you know, the fragrance guy, they all turned around, looked at me, and just pointed at me. So coming in at the number four spot, guys. Really nice one from the House of Amouage, Beach Up Man. Okay, coming in at the number three spot. Again, it's another freshie. It's another spring and summer fragrance, but 
this is probably the most versatile one on the list. So that could be the reason why this one seemed to get me a little bit more compliments potentially, uh, just because I wear it a lot more in a lot of different situations. So from the House of Creed, you have got this one here, Green Irish Tweed. And I've talked about this one a fair few times on the channel. I think I actually rated this as a 10 out of 10 fragrance, and it definitely is. This thing has to be in my collection forever because something about the green uh, freshness, the almost gr freshly cut grass kind of smell people compare this to uh, is just beautiful. And it's a timeless DNA. It's been around since 1983 or, or something like that. It's been around forever. People know the DNA. Uh, it's so safe, but because of how safe it is, it, and, and there's a reason why there's so much clones of this. There's so much like uh, things that smell like green Irish tweed. And that's just because of how good the DNA is. Funny enough, I wore this one to my girlfriend's mum's like birthday party thing where a bunch of her kind of friends were and they're like in their 40s or 45, whatever. And uh, this seems to do really well with uh, older uh, generations. So I'm 23 uh, and I do still get great compliments on this with people around my age. But weirdly, uh, every time I wear this to like a bar or something, uh, people always uh, compliment me on this and they're always a little bit older than me. So in the summertime, I was actually out the front of well, a pub in the UK, we call it, uh, or a bar. I was actually just out the front and I was speaking to one of my friends uh, at like the, the kind of entrance to this, uh, to this pub. And I had two women walk past who were a little bit older. I'd probably say they're in their um, late 30s, that kind of thing. And they walked into the bar. And literally like five seconds later, they came back out and they said, look, one of you boys smell amazing. And um, uh, I was like, okay, maybe it was, maybe it was me. And funnily enough, I'd actually sprayed this uh, four hours. Yeah, there, thereabouts four hours uh, before they actually gave me a compliment on this. And that's quite surprising for a Creed. This one seems to be one of the more uh, well-performing Creeds. So coming at the number three spot, you have got Creed. Green Irish Tweed. Super nice one and a perfect signature scent for anyone. Okay guys, coming in at the number two spot. This one I absolutely love. Uh, I Again, I rated this one as a 10 out of 10 fragrance and the grapefruit in this is just perfect. It's a similar kind of grapefruit note that you would get in Dolce and Gabbana the One and it's a freshie and it's so almost modern. Uh, it gets me amazing compliments. It's so good in terms of performance and the one that we're talking about is this one here, Suspiro Vibrato. So Suspiro Vibrato, like I said, is a grapefruit bomb. So I'd probably say about 50% of it smells like this really nice grapefruit that you would get from Dolce & Gabbana the One. But you also get hit with like a really nice sort of powderiness to it as well, sort of uh, like relaxing powderiness. It's quite a weird fragrance to describe, but it's so fresh, it's so powdery, and it just gets such good reactions. Again, I wore this one when I went to Tenerife and I would wear this one more in the daytime. So whenever I'd be going down to the beach, whenever we would be going into like the uh, uh, the shops and stuff like that, to the bars out on like the front down by the beach, whenever like the waitresses and the waiters would come up to us, whenever we were going out for food and stuff like that, I had two people say, oh, again, uh, one of you smell quite nice, what is it? And it was me wearing vibrato and it's just so good. Whenever I was home as well, uh, back in the UK, I would wear this one quite a lot. I would wear this to the office, because you can get away with it to the office, uh, just because how fresh it is. And again, it just does great. And I think because of the grapefruit note, my girlfriend really likes this one too. So she's a really big fan of Bleu de Chanel, which I'll get by here, which also has a really nice grapefruit note. So if you are a fan of Bleu de Chanel, give this one a go because it just smells amazing. A 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. Amazing reactions, amazing performance, and an amazing smell too. So coming in at the number two spot, Suspiro Vibrato. And guys, just quickly before we get on with the number one spot, I just want to say that I do decant all these fragrances. And I've recently set up an Etsy store. So if you are potentially interested in a 2ml, a 5ml, or a 10ml sample, then I will be leaving links down below. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, then there is the link. So Coming at the number one spot, this one I debated very hard on between this one or Aventus Cologne. And Aventus Cologne, I did want to include it in this list, I just don't have a bottle. Uh, I recently ran out of the 5ml 
uh, sample that I got of it. And me being an idiot, uh, either I lost it or I accidentally threw it away or left it in one of my trouser pockets or something like that. Uh, so that is why Aventus Clone isn't on the list. But again, I would probably slot this one in uh, the number two or three spot. Uh, but coming at the number one spot, this one without a doubt had to be here. This is my new most complimented fragrance. It's probably my most complimented fragrance of the last uh, one to two years. Uh, that's how good this fragrance is. And it reminds me a little bit of Sauvage in terms of like the hype that was on around this one. This is probably the most recent fresh fragrance that I smelled that really blew me away. Uh, and coming at the number one spot, guys, is this one here. Imagination by Louis Vuitton. Oh my God. Yeah, so this thing I think has got the main note of Citroen in it. And Citroen is, in my opinion, my favorite fragrance note. Uh, in terms of, like freshness so this is like a really fresh fabric soft now this is like something that i can imagine like a tech ceo or or kind of like you know new age uh, money or someone who's just come into a lot of money would smell uh, in like the kind of new digital age someone that is like a, a digital nomad who works from his laptop he's got you know the pressed white shirt he's got like the the silver rolex just modern it just smells nice and fresh, clean, and modern. Every time I've worn this, I have had someone either react to it and say they can smell uh, someone is, you know, someone's wearing a lot of aftershave. I'll sometimes get the uh, uh, the reaction in work. So I know the performance isn't a problem. Uh, I had someone who was literally like about 20 feet away from me say he could still smell my aftershave <laughs> uh, after I just sprayed it. So that was with three sprays. So this thing is, uh, like my other friend said, nuclear. Uh, so the performance is probably why this thing does so well. Uh, a little bit like Sauvage, there is that kind of uh, ambery smell. I think there's amber in this one. Yeah, there is ambroxan in this, which kind of lets it linger and stay around and leave a really nice scent trail. Uh, and from my experience, the scent trail is usually where people will compliment you on. But this thing is just beautiful. It's got a nice tea note to it. Uh, so it's citrus and tea. And it can be worn at any time. It's so versatile. I've been wearing it for the summer. Again, I think I did wear this to Tenerife. I had some nice compliments on it. And uh, whenever I've come back as well, if I ever want to go out and I want to know for sure that if I meet like new people, uh, I, I will wear this because it's just so safe, but it just gets so many compliments. It's scary how much compliments thing this thing gets. So going in at the number one spot, if you are looking for compliments, this is what you get. <laughs> Louis Vuitton Imagination. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. Again, thank you so much for watching this one. If you made it up to this point in the video, please don't forget to drop a like. It really helps out on the channel. And also feel free to subscribe as well, because like I said, I'd be more than happy to have you in the community that we're growing. I will leave a link to all of these amazing fragrances in the description below, as well as my social media links, uh, my links to if you wanted to try just like the decants of these, or if you want to learn how to decant your fragrances and actually build a niche collection really quickly, then there is also a link to a video course that I recently made. It's £10 and it will teach you everything. It will show you all the different things that you need, the best ways to package it and actually sort your fragrances and speak to customers, how to list it. It covers everything that you need to know. If that sounds like something you would enjoy, then I will leave a little link to my decanting course in the description below. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.